website about uh, Mike Tyson's daughter, who um, four-year-old daughter. There was a uh, they had a treadmill in the house, and apparently she got tied up on uh, on one of the cords. And uh, the brother, the seven-year-old brother, went down, found her, pretty much lifeless. And uh, she's been in. Uh, well, the the quote from the uh, the publicist was extremely critical condition. And uh, but she was on life support. I think the well, not anymore, I, I, well, I just, I just, uh, just read on a uh, on one of the websites here that uh, that Mike Tyson's daughter died. So she died uh, earlier this evening. So just a little bit ago. So that's sad news, man. Sad news. Mike Tyson, former uh, former WrestleMania main eventer. Remember that? Wait, oh, I was there, <laughs> Hartford, punching out punching out Shawn Michaels. I couldn't tearing imagine. up a T-shirt. <laughs> I could not imagine. Were you there for that? Yeah, Hartford. Yep, yep. I remember Boston, that. Oh, no, sorry, it was not Hartford. Boston, Boston. My bad. I just, yeah, you know, I th- I think of it like, I I don't know, man. I I have a little niece, you know, and she's three years old, and and just, oh, for a tragedy to to strike. I mean, the kid was probably downstairs playing. The mother was upstairs. Didn't even know what happened. And uh, the next thing you know, you know, a precious young young kid like that. I mean, I just, my little niece, you know, the cutest thing, the cutest thing ever. And if it ever, you know, if if anything ever happened to her, I'd be, I'd be absolutely devastated. So it's sad, you know, it's really sad to see something like that happen. So condolences to Mike Tyson, man. Terrible, terrible news. That sucks I had to read that right now. But uh, anyways, well, uh, back to Raw. What else do, I don't even know how to jump into Raw after that, but um. What else do we have to the, the main event, right? Main event we had basically it was the Denver Nuggets and the Los Angeles Lakers. We had the Miz, Cody Rhodes, Ted DiBiase, Big Show, Randy Orton played the uh, team of Denver Nuggets against the Lakers team of MVP Jerry Lawler, Mr. Kennedy, John Cena, and Batista. What do you think of the overall match? I um think about it is. They went to a commercial break at 10.35, a little bit earlier than that. Came back at about 10.35. They had the uh, the Lakers PA announcer do all the introductions, one by one. And by the time the match started, we were at 10.48 is what I wrote down. So from 10.35 to 10.48, 12, 13 minutes, we had nothing but introductions. And when they when they said it when they when they went to the break right before ten thirty five and said we'll be back the main event's next, they said, Wow, ten thirty five main event and you gotta go to eleven oh seven. You know what I mean? And then they came back, they did the uh they did the announcers or, or they brought the uh the nuggets out first and then they went to another commercial break. Then we came back from that break, and we brought all the Lakers, the Lakers team and then we finally got the match on the way at like 10.48, 10.49. You know what I mean? And it just seemed like, I don't know. I, I know you want the Lakers PA announcer, da-da-da-da-da, this and that, and do the whole thing. It seems a little bit overdone to me, a little bit long, you know? It, it's, it's typical McMahon, you know. It, it, yeah. He really wanted to get that, that whole NBA time. type of storyline and went out and got the announcer, and you kind of knew who was going to win. I mean, there's no way in hell the Nuggets or Team Nuggets um, were going to end up winning anyway. Um, so it, it doesn't surprise me that Team Lakers uh, won that match. But uh, it, it was an okay segment. Nothing, you know. I, I think that the WWE should have done a little bit more of an impactful um, for the main event or for the event itself, based in LA. But they did pretty good. I mean, the arena, the top part was tapered off. You know, it was dark enough, but. You know, for less than a week on, on selling tickets, I'm not sure, and I'm sure the Wrestling Observer will have it sometime in the next seven days on how many of those tickets were comped. Um, but it was interesting that they can fill up that arena pretty fast, and it kind of shows you the smart move of moving um, to a, a major city like L.A. or New York City um, and, and, and fill up that arena pretty fast. Yeah, but the problem is you had like over 4,000 comped tickets. Something along those lines, you know what I mean? Where you only had about five or six thousand sold, and I think they had nine thousand in the arena. And the attendance, the uh, the early advance for the attendance tonight, SmackDown and ECW tapings was 
a lot worse than Raw, so I'm sure a lot of those are going to be comps as well. So, I mean, there's, I mean, there were a lot of comp tickets at, at that arena last night. So, I don't know. I, I mean, I know they did it, you know, because it worked because they were in L.A. I was talking to JMK earlier, and I said, man, if they did that, even if they moved it out to Colorado Springs at the uh, at the World Arena, and they did they did that spoof last night, I mean, the Colorado fans would have shit all over that, you know what I mean? I mean, they would have just, <laughs> it would have been it would have been brutal, because Colorado fans were all Denver Nuggets fans, you know what I mean? So to go out to L.A., then do a spoof on the Nuggets, where everybody hates the Nuggets already, you know what I mean? I think it worked out. I think it worked better to, to move it out to L.A., but I don't know. We'll see. I mean, we'll see what the actual, what the actual number is when it comes out, but it was it was fairly brutal. From, uh, well, it's, it's, you, you got to understand that McMahon should know better. I mean, the reality is you're going into a city that's playing in the NBA playoffs. So you also got to think how many of those are going to say, oh, well, now that Raw is in L.A., I'm going to skip this NBA game and watch Raw. You know, and, and there's a crossover appeal, of course, um, between those, but – Again, it's Vince, and he's going to come out, and he's going to say, "We'll do it in L.A." And let's, you know, he went on ESPN, had the Lakers uniform. I mean, you know, it's it's typical Vince marketing, yeah, and, 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 and he and really they, emphasizing on it. And then he did all that last night, right? And then, uh, I mean, I went back and forth between the Nuggets and Lakers game, and uh, I don't know if you caught it last night, but the uh, the Denver Nuggets won that game by 19 points, which uh, couldn't have made old Vince look at because like you said I mean Vince went on ESPN and said right on ESPN in an interview with the coach he says actually we're going to be going head head to head with you next Monday night he says to uh he says the coach or he said uh, maybe it wasn't coach they did well they did the one coach interview and then they had him on again on um on another segment for sports center and he basically said we're going to go head to head with you and did all this stuff where he was all about the Lakers I hope Denver loses da 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 and then the night that you go head to head with them, Denver beats them by 19. You know. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot. And if, if you guys don't follow basketball, 19 points is a lot. It's well, almost being well, a listen, jobber. Listen. They had it. They had it within nine points with about two minutes to go, and then uh, a couple of the Nuggets players banked some threes and uh, put it back up to 19 to uh, to end it. They're gonna play again tonight, I believe. I think it's coming on. Probably at nine o'clock. I think it starts at nine o'clock over on ESPN. So you know what I'm a big fan of. You know what my shows are. You know what my new shows are now. And you guys, you guys will laugh at this, but I'm into this reality stuff, right? And I love that show, The Deadliest Catch, where they go out and they catch the crabs out in the uh, out the Bering Sea. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, but I think that's that's on Bravo or one of those networks or something like that. Yeah, something like that, dude. Something like that. I like that, and then I like. Um, What's the oh the bounty hunter dog the bounty hunter where he goes out and catches the crew that's my uh, that's my weekly my weekly TV and you know that that motorcycle one too what is it the uh, the American Shoppers where they oh, yeah, the, yeah. Uh, yeah they've got the dad and the son arguing throughout the season where they hate each other and can't get along so I don't know I like it whatever that's my reality TV show you know what I mean I'm not watching like the hills. Or anything like that, any anything crazy like that. I don't know, whatever. It's my reality TV. It's my weekly programs. You know, <laughs> it's, it's better than watching American Idol. What a twenty-four-seven show! Is that what you were? Not twenty-four-seven, twenty-four. <laughs> yeah, but that's watch? over. It, fin- it finished last week, and I didn't like the ending too much. But that's another story for another time. <laughs> all right, all right. Hey, we got um, we got a bunch of live phone calls. You want to take some of these? Because yeah, we got a. Uh, Go for yeah, it. we got all right. We got through raw, and uh, I don't know. I guess we'll open it up. If you guys want to call up right now, we don't bite. Give us a call seven two four 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 seven four four four. Call ID number is three zero two seven three, followed by the pound key. Oliver Green thirty three from the live chat room here on WZR Radio. What's on your mind? Uh, not much. Uh, I was just uh, read online yesterday that The Miz was uh, part of the dark main event. And I was wondering, um, do you think he's progressing a little more than John Morrison is now? Um, do I, Well, you know, both of them right now are in singles roles. Um, John Morrison over on SmackDown with a face turn. I think he's got all the potential in the world. If you're asking me more who I think has more potential... 
I think Morrison, um, as a face, I think he could really get over on SmackDown. But, I mean, obviously they're, they're, they're pushing the 